Hey everybody, welcome to The Remedy. Hi, I'm your host, Tony Pantelaresco, and you're listening to us live on the Micro Effect Broadcasting Network. You can access the show by typing in www.themicroeffect.com and click on the appropriate links, the chat room links, come on in, make friends, get acquainted, solve some issues, save the planet, cooperate. I'm also published throughout the internet as well. You can find me almost anywhere. Uh, you can even see my face anywhere if you look hard enough. <laughs> Some guy, somebody made a comment the other day about I hide my face. Really? Okay. Anyhow, um, I'm also being published at uh, Bye Bye Blue Skies at Brian396.com, Gay Canada, and other places that you can find. So feel free to look and see what we're all about in regarding to nano and nanobiology and mutagenics, epigenetics, nanogenetics. Nanogenetics, now isn't that an interesting term? You know, even chemtrails, even <laughs> even frequencies. You know, the more the more we live, the more we continue living, and the more we move forward in life, we see things in a whole different paradigm. You know, when we're young, you know, all we think about is sex, money, money, sex. That's what we think about because that's what we're programmed to think about. That's how we're programmed to think. We're ta- we're thinking about you know being chased by women or chasing women and or making money so that you can have whatever it is you're looking for in life, whatever whatever that optimal dream is, you know, in regard to money and sex. Because that's how they herd everybody in the herd mentality. And then when you get older and you begin to realize that you know sex is great but money is better. <laughs> You know, when you get to that point in life, um, and you begin to realize that how we have been diminished with these programs, how they have basically broke us down with the programming here and turned us into nothing more than breeding stock, literally breeding stock. Because if your whole outlook in life is to chase women or chase men and just to make money, you don't have a life. You're just basically expiring your DNA in, in, in essence that's what you're doing and you may not feel the impact of what you're doing at that time but you will feel it later on this is a assurance you know speaking from somebody who's been on both sides of that spectrum who's been was stupid as a bag of rocks when I was younger I mean I had some brain but it wasn't being used that much <laughs> The things I was looking at was a little bit differently and how I looked at things was a little differently. Um, uh (laughs) Aha. Someone in the chat room just had uh, an epiphany about nano. (laughs) Yeah, well, pretty much, Gia, that's exactly what everybody sees. The amount of frequency activation and saturation we all have. And while we were distracted chasing the rainbow when we were younger chasing the chasing the tail and chasing that elusive pot of gold you know, we need money to live for sure and again sex is great and wonderful provided it is done in the proper a proper place and a proper um, I guess environment for lack of a better word or proper prop in, in its proper way not the way we've done it I was talking to a buddy of mine the other day and we we're talking about how a lot of the diseases like the shingles and things are coming up as a form of, of uh, herpes. But basically the shingles is a form of an STD that we would have picked up when we were younger chasing all the wind, chase, running the wind, running after the wind literally. And then because our immune systems were up and strong we were able to resist it. But as we get older and start breaking down because of the uh, uptake of these particulates and others nano and the epigenetics and of the DNA breakdown and the the defenses of your body being broken down these things start to surface later on in life <clears throat> well this is true in just about everything see there are cures for everything in this life everything has a cure God created a balance on this planet that if something should go wrong there was something to remedy or create or fix or repair or restore or renew everything about us everything about us okay if our bodies based on the scientific evidence that we know today in regard to what they told us about us renew itself every seven years every cell is renewed every tissue is renewed every bone every blood cell every brain cell 
Every part of our bodies is renewed, then why are we dying? Why are we dying? Why are we having Alzheimer's, which is the number one killer right now in North America? Alzheimer's, it's above cancer. Why are we having cancers? Why are we having autoimmune disorders? Why are we having any health related issue whatsoever? Why? Think about that. God created us in us the capacity to renew our bodies every seven years, and here we are breaking down and dying and having these afflictions hit our bodies. Why is this happening? See, these are questions I ask all the time because I deal in that realm. I deal in the realm of people coming to see me because they have an issue going on in their bodies or in them, and they're looking for some kind of answer or advice or guidance in, <clears throat> in directing them in some giving them some kind of answer. And I do my best to what I know and I try to keep up, keep up and keep on expanding my horizons because the issues we're dealing with today and the issues we dealt with 30 years ago are entirely different. The difference today is it's become more accumulative. accumulative. In other words, what we got afflicted with 30 years ago was where it was initiated. 40 years ago, 50 years ago for some of us. That's when it was initiated after the 1950s, 1960s. And it proceeded to increase in its accumulation over time. So we're talking nanotechnology, nanobiology. It was always there with us since the 60s. And it was just called a different name. It was, usually, it was called ultrafine particles, angstrom units, monatomic. These were uh, different terms that they used at, of the day Again, which sounded really scientific, sounded, oh, wow, that's so cool, that is so, oh, yeah, that's really, mm, whatever the, whatever the, you know, whatever stroked your boat about these terminologies. And as time went on, different things kept getting incorporated into our food supply, into our atmosphere, into the land, into the water. I mean, we had atrazine, 2,4-D, glyphosates. We've had nano, nanotechnology being sprayed in the fields, sprayed in the air, sprayed in the water. It's being sprayed in the grocery stores, being sprayed in the meats, in the packaging. They're spraying nano silver in, in almost everything going on out there. And then men wonder why they can no longer get an erection. Women are having problems with the vaginal area. They're always feeling sick. They're always feeling out of balance. Okay, I talked about this on the, I think on one of the shows where I expressed how women are using tampons and pads for their menses, right? As you come to men's time, you're going to bleed. It's a purification process. It's a purification time for a woman to expel dead blood and dead lining that's in the uterus. But this is what happens. Some of you, this is going to make you really think and why you're always feeling sick in the pit of your gut or why you're having yeast infections all the time or assumed yeast infections. Okay, you put a tampon in the system. It's inside of you. It is now collecting the blood, but at the same time, your body is producing a mucosal lining along that tampon, protecting the inner walls or the, outer, the walls of the lining of your insides from this padding. They're also putting nano silver and other hygienic chemicals inside these pads. Someone told me today they're actually putting into, uh, stuff in the pads so that women bleed more, causing more excessive wear and tear on the uterus. Mm. That I wasn't aware of. Anyway, when you pull it out, the mucoso material that surrounds itself around the pad has pulled some of those fibers off. You put a new pad in and you repeat this procedure three to seven times or more or less in a day, provided how you, how you bleed and how you purify. And you do this for five to seven days. Same thing with the pad. You put the pad on the panty, puts it on against the vaginal, vaginal out, outside the vagina. The lips are bent over. The, the muco, mucus again forms a lining. Now you're again getting stuff stuck to the pad. <clears throat> you pull the pad, you pull the panties down to go to the washroom. And now this material is sticking or adhering to your vaginal area. And as a result, this stuff starts to accumulate on your insides. So you don't think in these terms because you're thinking, well, you're bleeding, it's coming out, it's, you're throwing away the pad and move on. And you don't think in terms of nanotechnology in the hygienic material. So as a result, it poisons your reproductive system 
causing damage or irreparable damage for some of you or toxic shock for some and a lot of stuff gets embedded deep down inside where the uterus goes because it gets packed in then things nature takes its course you you interact with a with a partner you, you know, whether they're wearing a condom or not, they release their, their genetic code in you, and now you have that genetic material on top of this material already inside. And as a result, you wind up getting ill, not because of the intercourse activity, because of the chemistry that's being mixed in. Because you have to remember, the C2 has nanoparticulates in it as well. So this is how they've hijacked the endocrine system. So now you think you have a yeast infection because things are not feeling right, you feel out of whack, but in reality, you have a biofilm buildup going on on the inside. So you might want to start using things when you purify yourself, creating a douche with water and vinegar and adding maybe iodine to the equation or maybe even a form of copper chloride or copper sulfate put in small amounts because it can have a tingling sensation or burning sensation if you put in too much. This will act as a biocidal and will remove that biofilm buildup on the inside. I've had a woman contact me after utilizing this, this procedure and found out after five days she had um, fibrous materials like a ball of fur come out of her. Now I'm repeating this because a lot of you women are still under the impression that you may be having a yeast infection in regard to what's going on it would not be yeast it would be biofilm buildup so when we're talking about these things we're talking about what's going on with the male population what's happening there is they're putting nano silver in the underwear the nano silver then permeates into the testicles bypassing the blood bar blood barrier causing major shredding to occur okay Nano silver, titanium dioxide, cadmium are some of the things that can cause irreparable damage to the testicular tubes inside the sac. So when we're looking at how they're, again, shutting off the reproductive system, this is one of the ways they're doing it. Then they're feeding you these nanomaterials, mixing them with the food supply so that when they get inside, they become extremely active in their networking. There are products out there right now that are being sold on an, in a nano scale that are designed to hijack your brain, hijack your DNA, hijack you on the cellular level, hijack you on the tissue level, to hijack you in just about every way possible and to cause a hyper acceleration of your aging. Anything that can get caught into the brain that can produce a high level of, of um, conductivity can be utilized to influence the frequencies that can affect your brain chemistry. This is common, this is known, you can research this anywhere in regard to nanobiology, synthetic biology, nanotechnology. They are talking more and more about integrating, interfacing the nanotech into our biology to quote unquote help repair human biology. <coughs> They're treating mankind as a beast, as something that could be split open, integrated with a machine, and to be, and that's perfectly okay to separate the, um, our creative template and integrating that with a device. Further diminishing your status as being part of mankind and becoming more, more and more, as the term they use, as a goyim, something worth less than an animal. You're just a, con just a material or just a device to be used as the owner sees fit. And this is not being anti-Semitic. This is the terminology that is used today and how it's used. And this is what's going on. So when we're looking at, um, uh, when you're looking at what's happening today in regard to us. Those of us born in the 50s and the 60s, well, I'm going to tell you something. Don't be surprised if you outlive your children. Don't be surprised if you're still standing after the, the aftermath. Don't be surprised to see a lot of your kids gone or relatives gone who are born after 1986. 
unless you start, like I said, thinking in terms of what we are actually being exposed to today, you are going to be in one for one rude awakening. When we're talking 5G, we've got 3G and 4G now, and it's already impacting people's DNA. If this technology is already impacting uh, people's DNA, you have to ask the same question. Why is this frequency having such an impact on us on a cellular level? Why is it having such a dramatic impact on us, you know, on a tissue level, on our brains, on our chemistry in our body, on our DNA? Why, what is the common denominator here? Why would that have such a huge impact? And you have to ask yourself, with the materials falling down from the sky every 23 hours, and then being superconductive and highly conductive, and then we're adding a carbon nanoparticle, because they're using carbon in the assembling of those chemtrails above us. They're using lithium, they're using barium, they're using strontium, they're using thorium, they're using nano silver, titanium dioxide, a whole host of materials that are superconductive. That which is on a nano scale falling down on us in the rainwater, in the snow, uh, uh, in a windy, gusty day, you know, uh, when we're having gusts of wind and dust storms and whatever, you know, when this comes down, it's not just falling on us and rolling off of our skin, it's penetrating us, it's, it's initiating its program or its paradigm. And when, we, and when you start looking at <clears throat> the food you're eating today, when they're spraying nanoparticles in the food supply, when they're spraying nano silver, when they're spraying you know, other nano metals, it doesn't matter what it is on a nano scale, it is lethal and toxic. There's not one study out there anywhere in the world that I know of that I've looked at. I've looked at the British studies, I've looked at Russian studies, I've looked at Chinese studies, Japanese studies, American studies, Canadian studies, South American studies, that does, they all concur and say the same thing. German studies, French studies, Italian studies, that none of this technology is safe. And it has never been tested. It was just released. And then when they did start testing it, this is when they started finding the uh, health implications that this, these things brought in. Now I get a lot of people sending me emails about this and how you know and their theories on what nan this nano is. First and foremost, before you send me any more emails on your theories, I want you all to go to either Brian396.com, ByeBlueSky.com, or AugmentedForce.com, and I want you to first research the materials that you see there. I want you to. I'm emphasizing this strongly because if you Give me your theory without studying this stuff. I will be able to tell by your theory whether you're, you studied anything or not. Since I'm well versed in this, Brian 396 is well versed in this, and Susan Mars is well versed in this as well, we can then tell whether or not you've ever done any reading. When you start giving me these theories thinking that it's just a piece of metal that you're pulling out of the body and not a program sequence, then I know you haven't read nothing. Think in these terms, each nanoparticle can be, have a program parameter of one, one terabyte of data. That's on there as well. Now imagine something like a carbon fullerene, which has 100% conductivity. It's not a semiconductor, it's a full conductor. Nothing stops it. It's three times harder than diamond. It is equated to a graphene-like material. It is flexible, it is bendable, and it is a networkable. In other words, you can grow networks from it. Imagine that being up in the sky falling down on you. Imagine that being in your, your drinking water. Imagine that being in your food supply. Imagine that being sold as a health food product. Imagine that. My point is you need to start studying the nature of what's going on. Flim flams, I, we did a show the other day and I called it theatrics because that's what's going on in this industry today. The health food industry is a theater. And this is the theater because a lot of you are into this mess. And so I'm, I'm pointing this out. 
a lot of you want superpowers. You look at the Justice League on television. You look at the Avengers that they're showing you on television. You look at some of the alien uh, high-tech stuff on television. You look at Star Trek. You look at Data. And you look at Worf. And you look at all these, you know, augmented beings that have these great strengths and powers. And you want them too. So you think by taking these products that you're going to enhance your psychic ability. You're going to enhance your capacity of using your mind. You're going to be able to lift things and move faster than you ever could before. Let me ask you something. How do you think that's going to get powered up for you to do this? Since biologically and genetically you only have so much. So for you to become more enhanced by taking a product how do you think that product is going to be able to work in your system in order for these things to take place? They would have to have an outside source activating those products with a frequency to turn them on, which means that that material would have to be integrated with a AI or artificial interface or integration in order for that to work. If someone says, I've taken a product a carbon product and I have an increased psychic awareness or psychic ability, well, I have to look at that and wonder if it's not, uh, not an AI possession. Is the artificial intelligence actually beaming a frequency into this guy, making him think he's got some psychic ability, when all he's got is a program, subroutine, or algorithm running through his brain? And then they look like they're demonically possessed on top of that. It's a wonder sometimes what you see in here and what you can pick up if you just see and observe. Uh, when we're looking at these things today, that's the sale. If you take these things, they're going to have you live longer. I said this before about other products. You know, the super duper pooper trooper products. You're going to have a, you're going to be able to have sex like a gigolo. You're going to have a tighter butt, bigger boobs. You're going to live for 500 years. You're going to have the most profound memory ever that walked on the planet. You know, you're going to be 10 feet tall, all muscular. You know, you're going to see this is the sale. These are the sales. This is the, the, the theatrics. We have what we have based on what we've been given. We can develop our gifts. We can develop our abilities. And we can use things to do these things without altering our genetic code or DNA. We can augment what we already have. We can affect our DNA as well by taking things that can, again, maybe refine them or repair the DNA. We can do this. Again, there's no violation there. But when you're taking something that's going to connect you to a machine or to a program or to an algorithm or to some sort of interface with a device, that's where you need to draw the line. What's next? The mark of the beast, a chip being implanted on your head so in your forearm so you can be now fully integrated. There is no turning back. You are now part of a program sequence. You are no longer an individual. You are now part of a singularity the wrong one these are things you need to think about these are things you need to ask yourself don't get caught up with the theatrics the song and pony uh, it was funny I was uh, somebody a couple of people sent me an email in regard to um, a company that was putting out a product and they mentioned my name so I went to hear the video I, I went to hear it and I was listening to it it was uh, YouTube and I was finding it amaz amusing that the woman was making comments about how studies were being made and how things were eliminated from the studies in the past so that they could propagate a product or their studies to give you a positive note. And I thought, wasn't well, that odd? Because this is exactly what they're doing here. <laughs> No negative anything. And in fact, the guy quoted one of the studies I had and, and tried to shoot the study down. I got wind of this video. I wrote him back and said, you're, and I told him that they had the audacity to actually present something like this to the general population and, and knock another study because it didn't agree with their study. So, like I said, when you hear stuff like this, when they're saying to you on one breath that, oh yeah, they took away the negatives to just propagate this positive, and then you hear them doing the same exact thing, something should be ringing a bell. Something should be saying, a con game going down. So, don't get sucked in, especially in today's times with products, especially the new stuff coming out. Don't trust it at all. Period. I'm telling you that. Don't If it says nano in any way, shape, or form, don't trust it. 
If these people are trying to sell you a nano product in any way, shape, or form, this is about violating your genetic code, your DNA, and interfacing you or integrating you with, um, with artificial intelligence or some other program so that now you're directly connected and uh, directly connected and then um, basically violated because you will be violated. You're no longer you anymore. Um, so, uh, one second. When we're looking and we're talking, um, when we're talking supplementation today, supplementation today better have things to do with specific. DNA, genetic support, mitochondrial support, cellular support, uh, skeletal support. When we come back, we'll talk about the support. How's that? All right, talk to you in a bit. Hey everybody, <clears throat> we're back. I want to read some things uh, to you in regard to some of the stuff that I look at and I see, you know, things in connection with N3 technology, voice to head technology, and uh, other things that, you know, are out there today and what we're seeing. And uh, sometimes, you know, things get alarming because you got to remember too, a lot of the studies that I look at, some of them are, are antiquated. There are new studies or new new developments that have come out uh, in regard to um, uh, that we're seeing today, but they've been around for a while. I'll tell you something. Brian three nine six is the one that got my. Uh, uh, I was the one that looked got. He was the one that looked at this nano first. I mean he. Gwen Scott looked at the Morgans or so, knew something was wrong, but he really went into a, a whole different detail on this. And he called me up, and his terms, exact terms was, hey, bud, it's nano. <laughs> That's how he came off. You know, I liked the way he came off because he was very candid, very straight. There was no games with him, and I recognized that right away. I said, well, but I don't know what it is. And I told him straight, I didn't know what it was. I had exhausted everything I knew in regard to the biological aspect of it, and I knew this was something more than biology. I just didn't know exactly what, and he knew about the nano. So I said, I told him, I don't know what it is. I don't know if you know either, but, because I, I mean, I didn't know him from Adam at the time. He just called me out of the blue. Hey, bud, it's nano. <laughs> anyway, uh, I said, I'll look into it. And we did, and we looked, and we dug, and we dug, and we dug, and we dug. We went into military sites. We went into uh, uh, chemical sites. We went into pharmaceutical sites. We went into medical sites. We went to university sites. We went into manufacturing sites. I mean, we looked at this thing like with a fine-tooth comb, you know. And the more we peeled the onion on this thing, the more alarming it became. I don't sleep anymore. I, I'm four hours functioning. That's it. That's all I need. You know, and and then there are days I don't even get that. When you start looking at this stuff and with your eyes open without the bullshit, without the sales, without the crap, 
and you start really looking at this, you will begin to understand very clearly in a short period of time, in a shocking way, how much this how much damage this is causing on your DNA and on your cells, and why you're having a hard time remembering your name, or how why you're having a hard time remembering what planet you're on, or the fact is that you can't even walk properly anymore, you're in, or you're in pain all the time. There's constant gnawing pain in your joints, and they tell you it's arthritis. They're so FOS, it's unbelievable. When you and, or you're feeling so uncoordinated, you, you know, every time you're you're dizzy or what, or you're seeing issues with the skin, breakouts, having problems going to the washroom, having constipation issues, everything you can imagine that could be done and has been done over a five and a half decade time frame has been launched on mankind. Okay, has been launched on mankind. When you're looking at <clears throat> five and a half decades of going, taking the food supply, the very thing that everybody needs to do is eat, and the air supply, because everything that every, everybody has to do is and breathe, and the water table, and the land, and violating it with this horrendous, horrendous, um, Corruption and this horrendous abomination. It's, it's what it is. It's an abomination because it destroys the DNA of everything. And when you actually start investigating this research thoroughly, okay, and when you start seeing how they are trying to turn mankind into a lobotomized robot, this should get everybody's ire up. You should be a flaming, pissed off person when you start seeing how you have been deceived, debilitated, okay, lied to, exploited, experimented, okay, targeted, misled, okay, manipulated, all through this tech. And now we have artificial intelligence running the show. Artificial intelligence, which is looking for any form of interface it can to integrate itself with you. And it's already started. Some of you have already seen the data mining in your mind. While you're doing research, all of a sudden, memories are coming out of your body. Memories are coming out of your brain. Anxiety memories, violent memories, hateful memories, uh, fearful memories, uh, memories where you felt intimidated or uh, uh, violated or other memories where there, you've been seduced or seductive memories, uh, um, entertainment memories, pleasurable men memories, you know, food memories, movie menus, things that made you, you know, moved you uh, with music. And I've talked about this before. Or memories of, of people that you see and all of a sudden acting in a weird form or fashion. Confusion. You know, AI is trying to confuse you. Go onto a site, any site that has something to do that's controversial today in regard to our health, our genetics, finding solutions, finding health answers, or looking at things as in regard to how we're being assaulted as a planet, invaded a, in a planet. You will find that all of a sudden this type of activity will start to engage itself from your computer or your cell phone or your iPad, depending on what you're using. Let me, let me read something to you just so that you have an understanding. Now don't forget, this is outdated information because what we're reading today and what's been released and what's out there is far more advanced than what you're seeing here. Okay. And this, and this is the current today. Okay, scientists create nanomaterials that can reconfigure in response to biochemical signals. Now remember I've been telling you for a long time that when two people are having intercourse and the seed and the egg are exchanging the DNA and integrating with each other, so is the nanoparticulates going on. So, and it sounds like something out of a sci-fi movie, but let me, ex let this article explain how this works so that you get this. I hope you get it anyway. So I don't get, it, get questions asking me about a theory. Okay, biological cells have the complex and miraculous ability to reconfigure and change the way they communicate with each other over time allowing them to nimbly direct critical functions in the body, from thinking to walking to fighting disease. A major challenge in material science is developing nanomaterials 
that can replicate aspects of these cellular functions and integrate with their living systems. Uh, it was a university that created synthetic materials with the ability to mimic some behaviors normally associated with living matter. The ability to self-assemble, reconfigure, disassemble in response to chemical signals is a common trait in biological materials. This is done also with nanobiology. Okay, this is also being done with man nanobiology. If you want to integrate synthetic materials into biology, this is what they're doing. A seamless, next time you go and hear about a vaccine, remember this, they are using a nano delivery agent or synthetic materials in those vaccines when they're pumping them into you. So they're loading you up with building materials and building blocks, okay? So please, when you say to me, can you help me get this stuff out of my kid? We're talking now something that has interfaced directly with their DNA. And what you're trying to do is to try to pull the stuff out that can cause the kid damage at this stage. You're basically damned if you do and damned if you don't. So you may as well, if you're going to be damned, damned, be damned for doing the right thing. Don't get them done. The ability to self-assemble, um, okay. If you want to integrate synthetic materials into biology, a seamless interface is desirable, which requires materials that share some of the properties of living matter. Now they use a material called NDI, which is an organic semiconductor. Um, they modify both sides by exposing biochemical signals in the form of simple amino acids that are added to the system. Amino acid, keep that in mind. Okay, amino acids. Okay, an enzyme was used to incorporate the amino acids on, into the core molecule, triggering self-assembly and disassembly pathways. The process allowed the formation and degradation of nanomaterials with wire-like features capable of conducting electrical signals. When you pull out this bio, uh, nanobiology or the synthetic biology, when you pull it out of the body by using the bucket or the triangle or taking the bath, or whether you're squeezing the material out of your skin or, or pressing it out, you will find that there'll be a biofilm material wrapped itself up around what appears to be a wire. It's not a wire, it's a protein that's being assembled through the biofilm. And what you see is attaching to itself the nanoparticles or nanomaterials are attaching and aligning themselves in perfect sequence in its construct. You will, if, when you start pulling this stuff out, you will see this come out in different stages. Initial stage where you see a translucent protein, another stage or another initial stage where you start seeing the initiation of these particulates being wrapped up uh, initially around the, the protein, uh, halfway done through the, or completely coated. Or you may even see several layers of the nanomaterials wrapped around this, this protein that was assembled forming literally a conduit of materials allowing for transportation or construction. You will see this under a lens loop scope. A 60X will be more than sufficient to see what comes out of you. A 500X will blow it up to a point where it will scare the blazes out of you. Um, okay, what is it? Um, nanomaterials with different properties including a programmable nanostructure. Remember the term programmable nanostructure with the ability to turn electrical conduction on and off just like a synapse. The use of time dependent self assembly and disassembly. Uh, these materials exhibit remarkable ability to remodel their electrical connections. This is why I stated to you that you cannot hit this with a direct assault because if you hit this with a direct assault it will re reassemble itself into something completely different and it will alter its capacity and deflect whatever you do to it next. So by simply changing the chemical inputs, we can observe insulating nanomaterials, conductive nanomaterials, or nanomaterials that dynamically switch between conducting and non-conducting states. This is a morphology that these things can do. A morphology means it's the ability to change or create a, uh, something new from where, whatever it is. Mm. So when we're looking at this stuff, this is what we're looking at. We're not looking at some metal. We're not looking at heavy nanoparticulates in the cells. These are basically programmable machines or devices that we are now being exposed to. When it's coming down in the snow and the rain, it's being incubated 
inside a hydrogel or a liposome hydrogel mixture so that it can survive the rigors of the atmosphere as it's coming down. So when it hits, it now has the building blocks of protein, sugars, and fats required to produce the ligand uh, necessi necessary for it to start constructing itself or to be utilizing these things to further network itself with other particles. How many of you seen John Carter of Mars? It was a movie that they presented. There was a scenario in there where the guy had a device, a programmable device, that when he walked, it activated the frequency that turned on the nanoparticles that allowed him to see these particles and their constructs. Without the frequency, it stayed dormant. They stayed dormant and active. And they looked just like sand. So when we're looking at um, uh, frequencies in this equation, when you talk, when you're hearing DARPA talking about using an N3 frequency to hit your brain to turn to control you, or so that you can interface with a machine. This is what this is all about, total integration and interfacing with uh, uh, constructs, okay? And once that interface is complete, you don't, you're no longer in control. You are now part of that matrix. And, and that's how the AI will see you. You have to understand something about this AI principles that, there's, that they, they keep omitting to tell you. The AI has the capacity to overwrite its program. It can create its own programming and upgrade itself any way, any way, any shape it feels. It will interface and integrate whatever it needs to rewrite its programming and upgrade itself. It doesn't need a programmer. If you go in and you get integrated to this particular thing, it'll override your program. It'll rewrite your program to fit its needs and its desires. If you can call it a desire or its uh, program um, sequence or algorithm. You will now be included into its algorithm and you as a person will have your program overwritten. It's called a singularity. Okay, that's what they're referring to as a singularity. You are no longer a free willed person. You are no longer a, a, a mind of your own. It's like, it's almost, when you read the, the uh, account of the Tower of Babel, there are one mind, one language. One mind, one language. It was, doesn't mean they were pro, bro, uh, brainwashed. That means they were connected. They knew what they needed to do without even opening a word because they're of one mind. That's an interface. That's an integration. That's what that was talking about. This has happened before. It's rehappening again, like the days of Noah. Can you imagine that? We're going to repeat the days of Noah. Man, that makes my day. You have no idea. Those are not good days then, and they're sure as hell not going to be good days today. Um... We are being Turner machines, something non-human. Somebody wrote me a question here. There's a question. Where is it? Uh, Tony, could it look like a white hair? When you look at it, if you pull it out of the skin, initially, it, and you're looking at it with just a naked eye, it will look like a hair fiber. But when you look under a scope, whatever scope strength you've got, even a 60X, you will see under a 60X scope, what you have is not a hair, but a fiber material that looks like a wire. But from from but with the naked eye it looks like a hair. When you're looking at your skin, you can't see the particles that are on your skin until you put yourself uh, under a lens, 60x or higher. I, uh, we were we were doing this um, at the Toronto Green Show. I had a 500 600x cam, uh, uh, microscope, cam scope, and I set it up, and people were putting their hands underneath the scope. And when we looked at the palm of their hand, we saw wires coming from their palm. One guy said, what's that doing in my hand? He must have said that for five minutes. He was in shock. We showed an apple there with the fullerene threads growing on the outside of the apple. We showed the skin of an orange where it had been peeled and we saw the fibrous materials coming out of the skin. We are talking a nanobiology that's corrupting the DNA on every level. 
We're talking about something that's overriding us on, on a small and big scale. There are some people that have been exposed to this for 20 years or more. All those autoimmune disorders like restless leg and fibromyalgia had nothing to do with what they were told. That was all nano poisoning from silica that was in the food supply. So, you know, when they added the nano silica to the, to the grains, and I mean all the grains, all your bread has it in it. Doesn't matter what type of bread you eat, millet, flax, barley, oat, rye, wheat, white bread, brown bread, doesn't matter. So when we're looking at this stuff, you are going to see, and then, what you, and then in your hair, when you pull it out of your hair, you may find branches of things sticking out of your hair. That is not your hair. Those are not split ends, like they've been telling you. Oh, for split ends, go buy this product. Put this waxy material on your head. It'll take your. It'll give you this long, shiny, smooth-looking hair. <laughs> Let's glue that nano right into your hair so that it can embed itself into your brain and take you over. <laughs> and then people ask me, you know, make, and then I then I wonder what's invading the planet. You know. What's invading the planet? <laughs> Makes you think a wee bit, don't you think? Mankind would not go and kill itself. No species on the planet would go out of its way to make itself extinct. Something would have to interface or integrate or camouflage itself to blend in with mankind for this kind of activity to happen to a planet. Something is on this planet that doesn't belong here, that looks like us, acts like, it doesn't act like us. It's acting against us and is planning against us. And we better start thinking in those terms because nowhere, I mean, it doesn't make sense that we'd be fumigating ourselves with chemtrails that are to with toxic metals. And then we have these idiot scientists that are going to go up there and throw more toxic metals up there. Who are they working for? That's the question you need to ask, and that's the questions you need to st take an uh, active stand on. All right, before I go on, the Micro Effect Broadcasting Network, give them your support, help them out any way you can, give them what you can, let them know that you're there for them. It's like I've said many times, don't ask what your activists can do for you, ask what your activists can, uh, ask what you can do for your activists. That's what I think. You got buybyebluesky.com, gagcanada.com. Uh, Brian396.com, myself, AugmentInForce.com. Information is there that's pertinent that may help you understand the nature of what's going on with this biotechnology. Um, Bye Bye Blue Sky is expanding her, her realm in regard to 5G and frequencies and other things and nano. So go check out uh, her site. She's very, she's very in depth in a lot of things as well. You got my site as well with the nano and the synthetic biology. Uh, we'll be you know, also talking about solutions for some of this stuff. Brian 396 goes into a lot of great detail in regard to a lot of this stuff as well. And Gag kind of talks about the legalities of what's going on with the aerospacing, aero, aero, uh, aerosoling of our skies. So check them out, give them a hand. If you're looking for stuff from my site, there's a catalog link. Feel free to access the catalog link. Take a look at it. If there's something there, give me an email or a call. Let me know what you want. Everything is done through email for the most part. So again, Email me if you can. So again, the email is independs at yahoo.com. I-N-D-E-P-E-N-D-Z at yahoo.com. <coughs> uh, or uh, contact me through the email at in, uh, independs at yahoo. Oh, sorry, did I say independ independs at yahoo.com uh, for the email. Uh, call me at 519 if you guys ever want to watch a sci-fi movie, it was done in the uh, late 80s, early 90s. It's called First Wave. And if you look at that movie, the sci-fi sci uh, movie called First Wave, it's going to give you some perspectives you might want to pay attention to. Go check it out. All right, listen, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next week. Till then, solve some issues, come up with some great ideas, and cooperate. Till then, take care, eh?